All right, so it came to my attention a week or so ago that a certain YouTuber, I won't mention any names, made this 15 minute long ignorant tirade rant about Bandai Star Wars. <laughs> And uh, my friend uh, Tokyo Mall Detective, he, he made a response video to it, and uh, he made some pretty good points. So he said that, well, you know, the guy actually made some, some, some good, valid points, but I would have to disagree with my friend. The guy didn't make any good points whatsoever. Uh, so the, basically, the crux of his video is this. Give me, give me, give me. I need, I uh, need, uh, I need, I need. Uh, and so, in this video, he's like, oh, where the fuck is Bandai? Oh my god, it just stopped. Or, uh, you know, just, uh, the Bandai's not doing any good favors for the modeling community, and, it, you know, it's not that hard to make it, just make more. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, so he's like, why, do, why can't they just make more Y-Wings? Why? Why? I want this, I want this, me, me, gimme, 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 I want, I want. Just very, very ignorant. Now. I'm not saying somebody is stupid. Okay, there's a difference between being ignorant and stupid. Okay, uh, stupid just means you're stupid, right? Ignorant, you could be really intelligent and just not know something. Okay, like uh, uh, look at ben, Dr. Ben Carson, right? He's a brain surgeon. I would say he's he's pretty intelligent. But ask him what the the, the Egyptian pyramids are were built for. Yeah, that's, that's pretty ignorant. So um, yeah, you could you could be uh, you could be an astrophysicist, right? But you don't know how to make uh, repairs on your on your car, for example. It doesn't mean you're stupid. It just means you, you don't know how to do something. Okay, so uh, I cannot say that I'm a total expert at this kind of stuff. However, I can speak as somebody who actually worked at a Japanese model company for seven months. I quit when a whole bunch of other people quit at the same time and I, I went back to teaching English because I actually make a lot more money now and um, a lot less stress as well so yeah I did not make a big deal of it on my channel bec at the time because I just didn't, I didn't want to come across as like oh look at me I work at this company and you don't I, I didn't want to uh, draw attention to that whatsoever but uh, in uh, 2016 I worked at Alshima, and while I do like the kits that they make, um, not going to ever want to go back to the, to that that company. That's for sure. Um, I did meet a lot of uh, some some great people though, and made some connections. And actually, I just just uh, this past week I did some translation work for Hobby Japan because uh, somebody who works who I used to work with at Alshima, you know, he helped me. Uh, he asked me to do some translation work for him. So, am I an expert at licensing and such? No, but uh, I do have a bit of experience with this kind of stuff. You know, I had put on a suit and tie, and I went to you know Los Angeles, made some pitches at uh, at, at some different companies, and uh, do have some experience with licensing. Okay, so now this guy, his so much of his video. As I just, he was just kind of angry that uh, Bandai is not making Star Wars models of, of you know lame designs from that stupid abomination of a movie that Ryan Johnson is responsible for, or the the, the stupid uh, Star Wars cartoon with the with the lightsaber helicopters and like the the B wings that are so powerful enough to like you know blow up the Death Star or something rather. It, I, I I'm not interested in those cartoons. Um, they were never popular here in Japan either, and that is something that this guy doesn't seem to realize, that Bandai makes model kits for the Japanese market. Disney lawyers very, very early on made that abundantly clear to them by uh, giving C&D orders to various on online retailers. Now, that's something I've never heard of before. Now, there is a company called Harmony Gold, and they have the rights to what, what is called Robotech, right? Harmony Gold, I, I don't know what the hell else they ever do, but um, because they won a court case that they should never have won 
to begin with. They can say, they, 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 they can claim that they have rights to the Macross name. No, they have rights to Robotech. But because they can lord over this, this stupid uh, court decision by an ignorant judge and a stupid jury, uh, they have prevented anything Macross related. Like they had released, they, they did allow like Macross 2 to be released, and they also re had allowed Macross Plus. Then they started realizing, you know, people like Macross more, and we want people to look at Robotech more, right? So they, they just kind of prevented stuff from being marketed in America. Now, at the same time, though, online retailers like Hobby Link Japan, Amiami, Hobby Search, etc., etc., they can sell Macross kits to people in North America. Uh, Disney lawyers, on the other hand, though, they have a different idea about what to do. And in case you don't know, I think this guy I'm talking about is kind of late to the party, apparently. I get the impression that he doesn't have any Bandai Star Wars kits at all because he needs to have them like, you know, Jibungus scales and he hates 70 second scale or something. Um, th these online companies were not allowed to export or, you know, to, to, to have any uh, overseas sales outside of Japan. Now, eventually, they struck a deal with Bluefin and Bluefin was able to get uh, these these Star Wars model kits on this on the shelves of like uh, like Hobby Lobby or or I don't know what else is still left over in America by now. But at that point, it was a little bit too late, too too little, too late, right? So anyhow, licensing is not as easy as you would think it is. So as I said, I have worked in the industry a little bit okay um, this guy is ignorant of production schedules for example um, they have to set up these toolings and such now people who make resin kits and such that is really you can't do that on the same scale whatsoever right and that's why resin kits are so much more expensive um, resin molds are like floppy silicone like this it's very very different when you're talking about uh, injection styrene kits um, they these are like big heavy uh, molds right they're, they're they're called toolings and you have to set them up in a factory and you know have them ready for injection and such and they plan this stuff months in advance right so when something is being sold out now they have to make plans well in advance in the, in the future to start repopping kits. Um, there was a thing about the the Yamato, uh, Yamato 2199, the, the big tri-deck carriers. Um, those started going way up in price because, oh my gosh, you can't find them anymore. What the hell? And then anybody who spent more than they should have um, sucks to be you because they repopped those kits. Uh, like a, uh, started about like a year or so ago, and you can find them on the shelves still here in Japan. Okay, so there's the whole thing about the production schedules, um, the whole thing about region. Okay, they will make kits for the Japanese market, and what this guy fails to realize, and again, he's just some guy in America. I, I, I assume he's an American, I guess. Bandai makes these little kits okay now and they've been doing this for a very long time other companies have also done that as well already had little tiny small kits like this um, oh gosh uh, lots of them had um, nowadays mostly Bandai doesn't but anyhow um, like this stuff is box scale the, the Yamato kits are pretty much box scale which means there is no specific uh, 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 scale to them at all. They're just like just size to fit the box. Bandai for Star Wars, however, they kept these in consistent scales. Okay? So the Y Wing here, like this is a one one forty four scale model kit. Alright? So it's so for example this guy's kind of like a uh, you know piss and moan about oh like look at these one one forty four scale TIE fighter. What the hell would you want to build that for? It's not like 
they also made a 144 scale Millennium Falcon. What, what what's the purpose? Why would you even care about these little Tie Fighters? Well, I don't know. Maybe like put a little stick on this, like little you know, drill a hole, little rod here. You know, get some chopsticks. Put put some potatoes on those chopsticks. Boom boom. There's your Millennium Falcon. Oh look, you just made a diorama. Uh, uh, these things are in consistent scale with each other, and that's not what you got with these the old Yamato kits. Okay, so my one complaint is that they were only providing these with stickers. Um, so like I just showed you, they they made Yamato, uh, they they make Yamato, Star Wars, Macross. I just showed you, but they also have Ultraman, Dragon Ball, Common Rider, and stuff like that. Now the Ultraman, uh, those actually come with uh, uh, water slide decals. Um, the Star Wars ones did not until um, I think a year ago. They they came out with the clear uh, Return of the Jedi kit, uh, like it had like the, the Death Star, the Y wing, the X wing, and the Millennium Falcon. It was molded in clear. And I saw other people online, not this guy I'm talking about, but like online and forums. Well, what the hell are they making these out of clear for? That's so gimmicky and stupid. Oh gee, I don't know. Maybe people like to light them, for example. Um, yeah, they do make small, and this guy was like really, really pissed off about how small this Death Star is. But the um, the level of engineering on this thing is totally fantastic. This guy, I, I I don't get the I don't get the impression that he actually owns a single Bandai kit. But if he did, you could see the level of detail on this thing is fantastic. It is tremendous. Um, the M Millennium Falcon. My friend is like, dude, you think it has good detail? Put your optivizers on and look at it carefully. And it's just like, when I, I when I put those those magnifiers on, I'm like, oh my gosh, it is so fantastic. Um, so yeah, they 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 came out with the X-wing in three different scales. They came out with the Millennium Falcon in three different scales. And this guy is saying, well, the, the Bandai is not making any uh, you know, favors for the modeling community, and they don't know what they're doing. They're a bunch of stupid ass hats. Uh, I'm I'm putting words in his mouth and he even was kind of praising Bandai a little bit but the guy didn't apparently like I said I don't get the feeling that he even bought any of their you know, model kits at all so really what are you complaining about um, I, I saw people were like uh, um, you know, why, why, why can't they make like a, a 20th scale Y-Wing or some other it's like dude they haven't even made a 48th scale Y-Wing why would you even you know skip all the way to the 20th scale who's gonna do that well the, they they made that Macross Valkyrie in 20th scale. <sighs> Macross is really huge in Japan. All right. So and this is another thing that this guy was really ignorant of. He was saying, "Oh yeah, they'll just sell this these things left and right, left and right." Uh, Star Wars is not. I mean, it's big in Japan, but it's not huge, like for us, uh, especially when it comes to kids. In Japan, they will. Gundam is where it's at, and Bandai, that is their big cash cow. Um, this other stuff, yeah, they'll they'll make other stuff, but um, Bandai is really, really strong with the whole Gundam thing. So he was mentioning, like, this, uh, the ghost and that chopper and stuff like that. I, just this past week, some uh, sixth grade boys were walking down the hall. They were humming the Imperial March, you know, the, from Empire Strikes Back. Uh, I, if I was to stop them and say, hey, do you know, do you like Chopper? They'd be like, what are you talking about? Um, it's not the same level of understanding. Like, of course, you know, where's, where's Luke from? Oh, he's from Tatooine, right? Or, you know, all this sort of stuff. A lot of kids say they can't answer these questions. You know, they, they say they like Star Wars, but they don't really know. Um, you know, ask them uh, anything like... Uh, you know who who's the pilot of of the the RX seventy eight Gundam? Oh, that that's Amuro Ray. They know that for sure. But uh, like my sister in law, um, her husband again. My my wife is Japanese. Her sister's husband. He claims up and down. Oh yeah, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. And talking to him, he, he I realized he didn't even notice that there were like both X wings and Y wings in the the trench run in A New Hope. He didn't even catch on to that kind of uh, thing it's like for me it's like it doesn't make sense how would you not know that but then again you know <laughs> why do nerds suddenly appear every time we are near yeah so anyhow um 
yeah, the the Imperial Walker, the ADAT, was made in 1144 scale. Why would they do that? Well, then they also came out with an ATST and Snowspeeder combination in the same scale. Oh, gee, why would they bother with such a small scale? Oh, I don't know, maybe because you can actually make dioramas with that. There was a guy on YouTube, he made this really fantastic uh, diorama of uh, uh, the Y-Wing exploding in like the, the, the trench, right? Because they, they actually sold like a, a, a trench set. He had like this Y-Wing with like the nacelle being blown apart. Like it, he lit it up and everything is really fantastic. You can do that with a small scale. Doing that with like 30 second scale or whatever this guy is demanding, yeah, good luck. I mean, it'll take up your living room for that kind of a thing, right? Um, so, yeah. Uh, and this is something that uh, Tokyo Model Detector pointed out. It's like in Japan, they kind of like small scales. I mean, yeah, you can sell like a freaking 30 second scale uh, B-17 bomber, but you're not going to sell very many uh, 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 kits of that. Um, I know Trumpeter, they do a whole lot of 30 second scale like flankers or whatever. Um, Tamiya does make 30 second scale um, you know, like F-16s or, or whatever, that kind of stuff too. But the smaller scales are what uh, people tend to build. You got a lot more shelf space for that way. So yeah, a, this guy uh, just uh, assumes to say that Bandai don't know what they're doing, and uh, they're basically um, they're they're just they're not doing the the modeling any favors. The the modeling uh, scene. So. If you don't get any further in this video than right now, let this one image here show you exactly what the problem is with Star Wars kits. Check this out. Now, it's very bar barely visible, but on the shelf above these kits, uh, there is the 12th scale Sand Trooper kit. That's at regular price, but look at all that first order crap. That is all marked on discount for clearance. Okay, let this image here sink in. I took this picture at Yamada Lobby One. This is a major retailer here in Japan. Yamada is uh, mostly they sell electronics, but they also have a fairly decent model selection. Okay, so yeah, this is not an uncommon occurrence. You can see this Disney stuff, first order stuff, discounted many places you go. A lot of uh, regular hobby stores, they have a lot of this uh, Disney crap on the shelves, but the original trilogy stuff, you just can't find it anywhere because this stuff doesn't sell very well. This has probably hurt Bandai, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Now let's look at what happened. So Force Awakens came out. Oh my gosh, everybody's excited. Uh, the movie turned out to be just a rehash of A New Hope. And uh, at the time, I was just glad because it wasn't those freaking prequel movies. Um, people were complaining, well, Bandai hasn't done enough prequel stuff, uh, subjects. Whatever. It probably doesn't sell very well. Now licensing issues. I'm sure that there was some stipulations in their contract that they must produce a certain number of model kits per movie for the the Star Wars uh, subjects. Okay, so what happened with Force Awakens? They came out with a brand new X-Wing, which actually looks kind of cool because essentially the reason is because they just rehashed old uh, Ralph McQuarrie concept artwork and they just called that the new X-Wing. Um, they had a new updated Millennium Falcon, they had new TIE Fighters, etc, etc. Then Rogue One came out and they had that K3 PSO or whatever his name is, that droid, which is actually, I like that movie. That was a pretty cool movie, despite the fact that the main character doesn't really grow on you until the movie's halfway over. Uh, they also had the uh, whatever it's called, the U-Wing and the, the TIE Striker. Now, what is this TIE Striker? If you don't pay attention to what you're watching very closely in the movie, you won't even notice it there. Uh, they developed a model kit for the... It doesn't even show up until like the very end of the movie. 
And even at that, I think a lot of those those scenes were edited out of the movie. And so they made a model kit that of a subject that most people probably can't even remember was actually in the movie unless they were really paying attention. Again, not all of us are a bunch of nerds, right, who, who watches these, these movies. So that probably hurt them. I'm, I'm pretty darn sure that probably hurt them. So uh, what happened after that? The Last Jedi happened. Now, I know some people will say, well, how can you say that uh, The Last Jedi is a bad movie when you've never even seen it? You know, or how can you say that the, the 2016 uh, uh, feminist Ghostbusters movie is bad when you haven't even seen it? You need to be able to see something for yourself before you can you know, form your own opinions. <laughs> Look, I don't need to see Two Girls, One Cup to form my own opinion that it, it is disgusting. I don't need to subject myself to that. I can pretty much go off of what the, everybody else is saying about how s disgusting that video is. The same thing goes for The Last Jedi. I have never seen it. I never saw Solo. I never saw The uh, the, the Last Skywalker Awakens uh, Rises. The Last... I don't even know what the hell that movie's called. I don't give a crap. I'm not ever going to watch it. Now, Mandalorian. Oh, that's kind of cool. I actually have seen commercials here in Japan for the Disney Plus service. And they even show the Mandalorian segments in that commercial. Streaming is not a huge thing in Japan. They have Netflix. I think they have Hulu. Um, obviously they have Disney Plus, but it's not a big thing. And like in America, there are no more video rental stores, right? The blockbuster video are gone. Here in Japan, though, you can find Staya and Geo. You can actually rent movies here. It's different. Um, again, um, and this is, you can talk, I, this is a totally different subject, but, um, you can do your own video on this, I guess, but the Japanese, the concept of Japan is that because so much cool technology comes from Japan, that Japanese people must be computer literate and everybody must have computers and such. That's not the case whatsoever. Um, I can tell people that I, I have bought the tower and I, I bought a motherboard, CPU, and RAM, put my computer together, and they think I'm like some sort of genius. Whereas in America, that's, you know, like, you can find lots of people who know how to do that. Um, Japanese and, and computer technology are, like, really, really different. Um, you look at a lot of uh, uh, website design, and it looks like it's from, like, 1995. Uh, the homepage is for even companies and such. It's, yeah... Yeah, I, I can rant on about that, but I'll just leave that at, at that. Uh, streaming services are not that huge in Japan. Um, the Star Wars Rebels, that was on the BS channels, I think. BS is like broadcast satellite. Didn't get very much viewership at all. Um, th that's the, People don't know about that stuff. It's not a big thing here, okay? Um... I think like minions are pretty popular, but I think the characters are more popular than the actual movies are. Um, lots of kids, though. Oh my gosh, Harry Potter is huge, huge, right? And that's actually consistently been pretty big, but I think it's it's waning um, as uh, as years go by. Spider Man is huge now, I guess, because they have movies. But then, like before, like you know, nine years ago, uh, nobody, the kids didn't know who Spider Man were. It all depends on who their parents are. Um, you know, I might find some students, some kids who are like, oh my gosh, you know, uh, Terminator or aliens and stuff like that. But most of the kids, they don't know about that stuff. It just depends on what their, their parents are, are showing them. Um, because they really, they don't really have the, the resources to find out about that kind of stuff on their own. It's a different culture here. Star Wars might be big for now, but it's, it's probably going to be forgotten about because... Uh, before Force Awakens came along, Star Wars was not big among kids at all. 20 years ago, when I was teaching English in Japan, when the prequels were out, pretty big. Uh, when I came back, you know, like you know, nine years later, Star Wars was not big. Currently, it's big, but these sequels, these sequel trilogy, 
are they're painful to watch. My sister in law, she went to go see Last Jedi. She's like, oh god, this movie sucks so bad. Her husband, again, the guy who doesn't know the difference between X Wings and Y Wings, uh, he was like, oh no, I got to see this. I'm a huge Star Wars fan. You, you can't tell me I not to see it. I have to see it for myself. She's like, trust me, you'll hate it. No, no, we got to go see it. So he made her go see it a second time. Halfway through the movie, he was like, God, I, I, he, he wanted to just walk out of the theater. He wanted to give up on the movie. It was so bad. So, um, what did Bandai do for the Last Jedi? Um, they were mostly a bunch of uh, you know slightly retooled kits. You got the same X-wing, but now you got that stupid little booster in the back. Okay. Um, the only all brand new tooled kit that I remember was that stupid, that stupid looking. I, it's not an ad at the Gorilla Walker, whatever the hell that thing is, right? Oh, it's bigger and better, and it, it looks like crap. Uh, they made it like a small kit of that, just like a, the vehicle collection size kit of that. That's it. The, you had like a slightly retooled Millennium Falcon with like better sidewalls on it. Um, I really can't remember anything else. And then Solo. They had that updated, that retro-looking Millennium Falcon, and even though I never want to see the movie, I do think the design looks pretty cool. The imagining of what the Millennium Falcon should have looked like originally, uh, it looks pretty cool, actually. Um, but for some reason, like the gun wells, the, they didn't provide clear plastic for those. I don't know why they, they didn't give you optional... Uh, parts for that, but uh, yeah, you can say that they maybe dropped the ball in, in, a, in a few ways. So, uh, what else? Um, yeah, the Blast Skywalker Awakens or whatever. <sighs> Alright, so there's like that droid that is like a freaking lampshade on a, on a wheel or something. They made a kit of that, right? Mostly it's just a bunch of retooled subjects of stuff they've already made. Now, let me give you a little bit of a secret. It's not a secret, but this is what you have to come up with when you come up with model kit ideas. Again, this is me speaking from experience working at an actual model company. Let's, for example, Hasegawa, you know, like uh, last year I made their old legacy uh, F-15 kit. came out in the 70s. They came out with an updated F-15 kit in the 80s. Now, what do they do? They repop that same kit with different decal options uh, several times a year. They're a limited edition. You can get it with like, uh, you know, like the, the Mount Fuji um, or the, the with the digital camouflage, or the you know you name it, the different squadrons. It's the same plastic, repopped over and over again. All they have to do is come up with um, uh, different decals, okay? Or take for example the Aoshima DeLorean kits, right? I'm, I'm still solely working on the Back to the Future Part Two kit. There are very little differences between the Part One, Part Two, and Part Three. They all use the same body. Right, but they have like different parts, uh, you know, different. Like for example, uh, the part two has the Mister Fusion. Uh, part three has like uh, the the nineteen fifties tires or the railroad tracks. You can make your your decisions, uh, but it's basically the same kit over and over again. All they have to do is just make some minor retoolings, different different decals and such, and then bang, you have a brand new kit. You can sell it. That's what they've been doing with. Uh, with uh, the the droids and such as well with the Bandai Star Wars. Um, going back to Alshima, again, I can speak from experience, the Knight Rider. It's not Knight Rider Season 1, Season 2, it's the same car. Knight Rider Season 3, slightly different uh, cosmetic changes, so that is accounted for in the car. Uh, Knight, Knight Rider Season 4 had, I think that was when they started with uh, the, the, the sunroof options and such. You can build a car like that as well. So, yeah, it's um, different 
different variations on the same kit and you, basically you can just repop it repop it and it's the same thing very minimal retooling costs to produce a brand new product that is a typical plastic model strategy now um, in case you're wondering what's going on with uh, the Aoshima uh, the Mad Max interceptor <laughs> that is that's a totally different story and um, I'll get to that later that is about licensing the license is just not available now the green light they have actually they made a, a, a whatchamacallit it's like a what what scale was it like one one sixteenth scale or I don't know what scale it was but it was like a a, a die cast collectible it does not say the Mad Max right that is difference it, you can uh, without using the Mad Max name they can make a kit like that and actually when I worked at Alshma I met the the president of uh, Greenlight and he was interested in in doing that apparently that's what he went ahead and did but without the Mad Max Fujimi did the same thing with their Blade Runner kits they just didn't use the, the name Blade Runner I think they had the rights the they had somehow got like the rights to the designs but not the actual movie name and that's kind of a workaround that some companies might do so you know hey if, if it gives fans what they want then I'm, I'm all for it but uh, Alshma didn't want to do that with their 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 Mad Max kits so um, especially because they had already uh, released them under the Mad Max name um, I think they just want to just stay away from that licensing is, is a real complicated thing in the very very beginning I was at the All Japan Hobby Show and I was filming the the Bandai exhibit when Star Wars was like brand new okay people at that time were complaining well we already have an X-Wing we already have a TIE Fighter we don't need these oh my gosh blah 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 uh, we, why, why don't they just come out right out of the gates with a B-Wing or, or an A-Wing uh, B-Wings and A-Wings are barely seen even in Return of the Jedi you, you can't no they're gonna focus on the main subjects first and then work their way down they gave us an A-Wing and it was pretty fantastic probably a little bit too big for the scale it should have been that is not 172nd scale oh well that's one minor gripe uh, the B-Wing with the lighting and everything so very very cool they did such a fantastic job giving that to us um, again like three different scales for the Millennium Falcon or the X-Wing um, consistent scales now the guy was he was probably gonna you know complain about this this is actually bigger than I thought it was going to be this is actually a really really fantastically detailed kit um, if you can't see that for your own eyes and I'm sorry but um, you're ignorant I have built two of these Star Destroyers and, and this had better detail than the, the old AMT kit and the Ravel kit definitely um, yeah so these sold well and then they came out with the larger scale uh, 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 Star Destroyer kit right they know what they're doing. They, they, they know how to make people happy, and they have been been making people happy for the past several years. But apparently, it's just not good enough. Now, I have actually talked, st stood around and talked with uh, the Bandai reps. Um, this one guy, I think his name, yeah, here I have his business card, uh, Mr. Nagasawa from Bandai. Um, I gave him lots of ideas. One of them was this, the Blockade Runner. This is actually a, a larger kit than I was expecting it to be. This is actually pretty large. It's pretty cool. And it even comes in a bigger box, too. right? It's not box scale. It's a thousand scale. That's pretty actually consistent, right? They, they do thousand scale uh, Starship Enterprises as well. Um, he, I talked to him about doing... Um, the droids and they've come out with a whole bunch of those different droid kits as well I talked to him about uh, like they had the, the perfect grade Millennium Falcon I said well 
you, there are people like myself who can come out. You know, we 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 want to do our own lighting for these kits on our own. We could probably do a better job than what comes with your your kits. Uh, maybe sell it without the lighting kit, and they did do that. Unfortunately, it came with stickers instead of decals. I don't know what they were thinking with that. Uh, but they did the same thing with the Star Destroyer. They came out with the one with the, uh, uh, the with the lighting kit, and another one without the lighting kit. And that's the one that I bought. But of course, people were pissed off because it wasn't big enough scale. It wasn't four thousand scale instead of uh, five thousand scale, like like they did bring it out with. Either way, it is fantastically detailed. So I'm not going to complain. So I'm not bringing this up because uh, I want to say, oh yeah, they were following all of my advice and they just happened to make these these kits because I told them to make them. I'm not saying that whatsoever. It's possible that I had given them the idea. Maybe they already had the idea already. I have no way of knowing. But at the very least, this says that my ideas were kind of in line with, with what uh, they had in mind. Another thing is... And this is something that I don't think even the, the Japanese people really understand. But, um, yeah, Bandai did not drop the ball with Star Wars. Disney dropped the ball with Star Wars. Disney dropped a big freaking turd. Uh, three, well, Solo, four. Four stinking turds. And with each turd, they sneered at the fans and accused us of being Nazis or or misogynists and if you, you fill in the blank right they call us man babies and such uh, didn't used to be that way did not need it never was like that in the 80s um, or the, even the 90s for example um, so yeah the last one I ever saw was Rogue One and even still it's like uh, they the characterization whatever it, it kind of grew on me towards the end of the movie I guess but Japanese people don't know about American identity politics and how vile and poisonous it is the Chinese though they have uh, what do they call it baizou I think the word is for uh, uh, you know self-entitled uh, white liberal American liberal who thinks that they, they can solve all of the, the the people of colors problems and such uh, they flat out rejected the the last Jedi um, within like it wasn't even in the theater for like more than like a week or two it, it totally was gone in like two weeks tops uh, identity politics is poison Japanese people aren't totally aware of that. However, they do know what crappy, crappy storylines are. Rey was made to be like she doesn't need training because she's an empowered woman. And if you don't accept that, then you're a, you're a man baby or you're a you know you hate women or whatever. Uh, that is a bunch of crap. But they they can see that the. the characterization is dumb and especially how they basically crapped all over Luke Skywalker it did not sit well with people I can't put any words in the mouths of the Bandai reps but I can imagine that they were not really happy with how these movies were turning out and if everybody you know if you can go anywhere and find uh, these these first order kits on clearance that says something to you right now that really this video does not need to be more than like you know 30 seconds I can just show you that one picture of, of how nobody wants this crap when I went to Niigata I, I checked out the hard offs and the, and the, the book offs um, and Mandai and Kante Don I didn't see much original trilogy Star Wars kits at all but I saw a glut of First Order. If you want to get First Order Stormtroopers, knock yourself out. You can go find those anywhere you want. First Order TIE Fighters, you can find those anywhere you want. The X-Wings might be a little bit, you know, because even I can admit they actually look kind of cool. But then again, it's just recycled uh, Ralph McQuarrie concept artwork. It's actually pretty cool. Um, but, yeah, these movies left a bad taste in people's mouth. That is not Bandai's fault. They didn't make the stupid movies 
that is Disney. They don't know about how, uh, what's her name, uh, uh, Harvey Weinstein's rape enabler has been hired to be in charge of stuff at Lucasfilm, you know, that uh, Kathleen Kennedy. They don't know about this kind of stuff, but they do know what crappy movies are. The Star Wars movies are crappy. And, yeah, oh, well, they need to make the Rattus, or they need to make the the, the Kylo Ren Starfighter, or they need to make all the... It's not going to sell. It is not going to sell, and the people at Bandai know more than you do about what sells and what doesn't. Very small toolings, very small minimal cost, so if it doesn't sell well, you didn't hurt your company too much. You can sell the, the units, hopefully, and then maybe you never bother repopping it again, I guess. Uh, however, if it sells very well, then they might actually make a larger scale, just like they did with the Star Destroyer. Hmm, you see what I'm getting at here? Okay, so uh, there's, there's costs involved. There are factory issues to take into consideration. Now, the companies like uh, Hasegawa, Tamiya, Bandai, Fine Molds, they manufacture stuff in Japan. Uh, when I worked at Aoshima, though, their factories were in China. And those same factories were um, shared with like auto parts manufacturers and stuff like that. So they had to like plan well in advance. And if the auto parts or, or the washing machine parts or whatever that needs to be uh, made, uh, that, those will probably take higher priority. And so then, you know, your, your manufacturing just got bumped back uh, maybe a month or so. Who knows? Because it, it takes time to set the stuff up, do the injections, and then, you know, whatever. Um, there's also a bunch of other issues, and maybe I shouldn't even talk about that. Um, but that, and the, then again, that's China. Um, Pit Road, their stuff is done in China. I, Platts, I think maybe their stuff is done. In, I don't quote me on that. I don't know. But there's a whole lot of factors that you have to take into consideration. Something else that I see is that people are like, well, well why the hell can't they they do? Uh, uh, a model kit of uh, the Firefox, for example. I'm talking about the Clint Eastwood movie from 1982. Fantastic design. Everybody thinks that that MIG is really, really cool. All right. Well, okay. First of all, um, a license has to be made available first. You can't just say, okay, our company's going to make the Firefox. No, you have to actually wait for a license to become available. Or, and this is something I have exam you know, some experience with, you can actually contact their their company and say, hey, you know, could we actually make a licensed product with your um, your 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 subject? Then they have to approve it and such, right? Um, with the Firefox, actually, I was. I was on the phone with Mel Paso Entertainment on like on a regular basis trying to get a hold of somebody who uh, knows where their licensing department was. Um, eventually I found out it was uh, licensing is handled by Warner Brothers. The guy said, no, uh, you don't ever count on that being um, uh, ever made because it's basically the movie's mostly forgotten about. It's not a big deal today at all. And, um, you know, even, even with like a 30th anniversary or a 40th anniversary, uh, they're probably not going to make it available. Most of the licensing, from what I can remember, they have like these licensing uh, conventions in Las Vegas, I want to say maybe twice a year, I think. And I saw like a catalog of like all of the different licenses and, and such. Um, when I worked at Alshima, they asked me, hey, what is your opinion on this uh, Ghostbusters? Do you think maybe we can get on with that? And from what I knew, I, I was like, no, this movie's going to be box office poison, right? Um, it's, and it, I turned out to be right. Everybody hates that movie. So, yeah, that was not good. Um, so, yeah, licensing. Now, 
licensing for Star Wars has not been profitable for Hasbro, Lego, and a bunch of other uh, companies as well. And they have scaled way back because people are not buying up Star Wars stuff. And I think, if I remember right, I'm looking at thinking of uh, what channel is that? Um, there was the channel of uh, oh shoot, what's his name? Uh, oh no, no bullshit. I think he had exposed how the Star Wars had basically bankrupted Toys R Us. Just stacks and stacks and stacks of, of Ray and Rose Tico action figures that, that nobody wants to buy because Kathleen Kennedy wanted to try to make uh, Star Wars a, a appeal to little girls and they are not interested. You can't make them be interested in this stuff. All right, so social justice propaganda is box office poison. Get woke, go broke. That is pretty much the, the rule. Now, that will affect overseas sales, definitely. Um, then again, also, they, it's really difficult. It really blurs the lines with uh, domestic and overseas sales. Maybe due to the, 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 this, this, the cease and desist letters that were given to these online manufacturers that made it more apparent. But like with my, uh, with my experience at Alshima, I was basically involved with overseas sales and there is a role blurring though because like for example a lot of people will buy model kits from Hobby Link Japan which is based in Japan but yet they sell overseas right so a lot of the overseas customers count as domestic customers and vice versa so there's that kind of stuff but for the most part, though, Bandai has to look at what will sell well in their home country. Licensing issues, though, I don't know. I mean, I haven't seen what everything is entailed, but I think there isn't there some sort of stipulation with Disney that they, you have to... Uh, anything involving George Lucas's original designs, that you have to pay him a certain percentage of it. So that's why they changed the Stormtroopers to make them look stupid, because it's not the original trilogy designs. Um, isn't that why they're pushing companies to make more Rose Tico action figures than like a Han Solo action figure or something rather for these, these, new, fi these new movies? That probably also factors into the whole thing. So for me, the one thing I'm really holding out for, I'm hoping that they will get around to doing, is a tie bomber when i talked with the bandai rep mr uh, nagasawa he he seemed kind of you know uh, he was interested in that kind of thing but at the same time tie bombers are not seen for very much and you only see them in the uh the empire strikes back is it worth making a model kit of a subject that is only seen in a few scenes in one movie, perhaps not. That's the kind of decisions that they have to make. Um, could they make a shuttle Tiderium, the, the Imperial shuttle? They could. Um, you know, probably the best scale to do with it would be like maybe 144 scale, because it is pretty huge. Gosh, I had my friend, he had the, the Kenner toy when I was a kid, that thing is huge. Um, you have to factor all this kind of stuff in. So if you want to make, for example, a TIE bomber, they, I, if it's anything like with the experience that I had, they would have to get a go-ahead from the Disney people. They would have to say, yeah, sure, you can make a TIE bomber, and then you can start to develop, you know, the R&D people, they have to get like the 3D designs and they have to like go through the whole tooling process and all that kind of stuff. You have to figure out, okay, if it's a snap kit, where are you going to put the snap joints, right? How are you going to get the, the clear parts to fit in so that it doesn't need glue because that is Bandai's thing, right? That's how they do things now. Um, there's a whole, these engineering costs. Then when you get to the, the tooling, then you have to go through the uh, the, the QC process, all that kind of stuff. It is a huge, huge amount of resources putting into a kit. And for it to not sell well, 
Maybe that's why you don't see a lot of these kits. I don't know. I can't tell you how 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 fantastically a Y Wing had sold, for example. But uh, apparently they are slowly working on, on re you know, repopping these things. But again, it is a slow process to say, Well, where the fuck is Bondi? They're they're dropping the ball, they're not doing anybody anybody favors and blah blah blah. Sorry, but this is the attitude is shit. I I I can't pretend to be to to give this guy the, the benefit of the doubt when he says stuff like this. It is just ignorance, and not only that, but apparently the guy has quite a reputation of being an online bully. Um, uh, he and his friends are kind of like the bane of of model kit companies. They have quite a big following, and I don't know why. I don't know why because. Uh, this is not a channel I would ever want to subscribe to because I don't like the guy's attitude. Um, I, when I make videos, it's all about just an, an enjoyment of the, the hobby. You know, there's no false pretenses. I'm not pushing myself off as like, oh, you can, you're going to learn from me because I, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just here to have fun. And if people want to come along for the ride, give me, you know, pointers and tips and stuff like that politely instead of saying you suck or whatever then that's cool, that's fine. Uh, people who troll my channel, I like to have fun and, uh, you know, show how, how stupid these people are because, frankly, the modeling community, I think, is really, really sick of the attitude of a lot of modelers. He claimed to know what can bring new modelers right into the hobby. Um, and then at the same time, he was crapping on the, the Sony PlayStation model kits and the Cup Noodle model kits and stuff like that. Uh, this is a different philosophy. This is the Japanese market. Cup Noodle is a huge part of Japanese culture, and the engineering behind that kit is really, really cool. I haven't bought it, but I can see why people would be pretty excited about this kind of thing. Um, I have a friend who does not build any model kits at all. I got him the Bandai Sega Saturn model kit for his birthday last year, and he's like, "Oh gosh, this is so cool! I want to, I want to put this together. I want to, you know." So I got him a pair of uh, nippers to go with it, so he can actually build it, put it together. He's never done it. He's the same guy who got rid of all of his Star Trek because he's a huge Star Trek fan. I saw he sold off all of his Star Trek model kits because he's figuring he's never going to get around to building them. And uh, this is the guy who now wants to build model kits of like video game stuff because he's a huge video game guy. Uh, so yeah, this this guy, he uh, he's he's crapping all over Bandai, and he thinks that uh, he knows what will be more appealing to people. And it's all from a totally Western point of view. And meanwhile, he and his friends are just apparently. I know I don't have Facebook, so I'm I'm not really firsthand witness to a lot of this stuff. But they have created a, a group on Facebook dedicated to belittling other people's works. And it's not really constructive criticism. It's just basically just making fun of people. I haven't seen it for myself, but I have seen a lot of people getting really sick of their attitude. And uh, this, this kind of stuff just needs to stop. Um, people, yeah, if it's, I can understand why people want to be competitive, right? But at the same time, ah, you know, I have been to a couple of uh, modeling events in North America. You don't get the level of creativity that you do here in Japan at model shows. Uh, the closest thing I had seen was the Wonderfest event in Kentucky, uh, when I had the once once in a lifetime opportunity to to go there a couple of years ago, uh, about five years ago, I guess. Um, in Japan, it's a lot more creativity, and I don't see contests. I know IPMS exists in Japan, but I've never actually come across it. Uh, if you go to the hobby show, the Shizuoka Hobby Show, it's the hugest event, and it had been maybe four days long. Now it's expanded to like five days, although maybe not this past year because it was canceled, obviously. 
hopefully it'll go back to normal but um, there's no contests it's just people with different modeling groups or individuals they get a table they put their stuff out on display and it's just all about having fun and celebrating the hobby and for me that's what is the most fun and when I see groups of uh, a few people who go around and they make a big fuss with different uh, modeling companies and you know because they, they don't make shake and bake models that you just like you know shake the box and then the parts fall out and, and it comes together perfectly every time um, they can be highly criti critical of, of different model companies and it's rather it's just kind of just an embarrassment to to the to the community I think so in the end Bandai needs to make kits that make the most money for them Maybe not what you think will make the most money for them, but what they know will make the most money for themselves. Uh, and if it's not Star Wars, and if people are getting kind of tired of Star Wars, there is a, a this tapering off of, of Star Wars sales, they're going to look at other things elsewhere. And Bandai continues to steamroll ahead. They continue to do well, I think. And if it doesn't involve Star Wars, they're going to come up with something else to do. So, really, I don't think they could really care less what some guy in America has to say about uh, what is best for their company when he really doesn't even understand the market here in Japan. So, when I saw the video, and it was really hard to get through, it's got like thousands of views on that video and yet it was nothing but ignorance and the amount of people who say oh yeah you, I completely agree with you oh my gosh they're not making enough kits with like huge scales and such well sorry you're probably not going to see that they made a 48 scale x-wing and I unfortunately didn't get that they could have made a 48 scale tie fighter they could have made a 48 scale y-wing um, we never saw that maybe we won't Maybe the 48 scale X-Wing didn't sell well enough, and that's why they didn't bother repopping it. These are the things you have to think about. So instead of just claiming that they don't know what they're doing and they're stupid and they're missing out, I think they have their own finance department. They have the their own people to look at the numbers, and they have to analyze, is it really worth going forward with this line? The newest kit that's coming out is another Luke Skywalker's X-Wing, and it has a figure, pilot figure, of of uh, Ray. And they re-engineered the because there's no droid in the droid socket. Very very minimal retooling with that. All they did is just what I just mentioned. All right. Essentially, it's the same kit all over again, but with a few extra parts to it. Very minimal investment with the tooling costs. However, are they still stipulated that they must make more kits of different you know subjects from the, this movie that came out just over a year ago? Um, probably, and it's probably perhaps hurting them, and they are a, a contractually obligated to continue to make this stuff. Um, I know like in March of last year they came out with a clear uh, last Skywalker whatever it's called uh, a clear set of uh, uh, mecha collection or I'm sorry vehicle collection kits um, yeah they they probably are required to make a certain number of this stuff if you want to see a shuttle or a tie bomber or something like that maybe Disney says no because they don't want to pay more money to George Lucas. So, uh, I can't think of anything else to rant about, uh, well, the response to this guy's rant, other than the guy's ignorant. Don't get caught up in his rhetoric, because he doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. Um, I would like to say, you know, otherwise maybe he's a nice guy, but from what I understand, he's not a nice guy. Um, all I can say is that uh, if you're one of his sycophants who've come to this video because... Uh, you're here to, you know, tell me off or whatever. Well, when you make comments in public, 
and you can't respond without denigrating other people. No, here on this channel, we like to have fun with people like that because really, uh, people like that are what people are really sick of when it when it comes to modelers. We don't like seeing bullies. We don't like seeing people who, who harass other people or, you know, they, they, they can't have an argument without, like, personally insulting people. Um, again, make note, I'm not calling the guy stupid. I'm just saying that he's just an unpleasant guy and he's ignorant about what he's talking about. So in the end, of course, it's perfectly fine to have a wish list. Or I have my own wish list of, of what I would like them to build and such as well. But there's a big difference between just having a wish list and just arrogantly saying, oh, they don't know what they're doing and they're, they're screwing things and they're not doing any favors for the modeling community and such. Uh, Bandai, in the past, f however long it's been, like, what, four or five, six years, five years, they have done more for the Star Wars modeling than all these other companies. Uh, it doesn't even come close. We, as consumers, of course, you know, we, we build these kits and it's basically like commercials and, you know, maybe it's appreciated, maybe it's not, maybe it's not even really noticed by the companies to, to what extent I, I can't say, but, um, we have to be, I would think, uh, there there needs to be a bit more of a respect for what, especially what Bandai has done, instead of just, you know, complaining and it's like me, 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 want, 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 need, need, need. Everything's about me. Um, dude, sorry. You know, 30 second scale, you're not going to get it. Um, if you want to spend like big money on uh, the Diagostino, where is it? Diagostini made that X Wing? I can't remember. SMKR, he was building that for a while, but those things like cost you like but hundred thousand dollars and it takes you like two years to collect it all. It's not worth it. Um, I think. Ravel Germany or somebody had made like a really huge X-Wing but like the pilot figure is like freaking made out of rubber or something rather like that. Um, I've seen like a resin replacement cockpit and once you put that in there it turns out to be a pretty cool uh, model kit. If you want something huge go with that uh, instead of just complaining about what Bondi is doing or not doing. Um, not every kit has to be shake and bake as well. Not every kit has to be perfectly, you know, it, it just enjoy. You know, heck, I'm having a heck of a lot of fun building this. This is the, the MPC A-Wing. People might say, well, what the hell are you doing? Are you wasting your time with that? You should build the, the, the Bandai instead. Dude, I'm having fun with this, and having fun is what really matters. Uh, I've, I've, I've heard horror stories about, like, uh, um, heck, like, a grown adult men having like temper tantrums because they didn't get like at least third place in the whatever uh, uh, category that they had uh, entered into with their, their modeling contest. Uh, that is just ridiculous. And I, I know exactly who somebody was who did that and um, I, I can't respect that at all. <laughs> uh, somebody who I used to even consider a friend. Um, other horror stories. Uh, there was a guy who had like stalked the judges or whatever because he didn't like that their what their decision was. That sort of bullcrap is what drives people away from the hobby. Uh, people who don't even want to go to modeling shows anymore because of all that. Uh, like I said, the modeling shows here in Japan, at least all the ones I've been to, um, they focus on just hey, let's just celebrate and we're not having a contest. Let's just show what people do and just have fun. Uh, I kind of like that. I'm not a competitive person at all. If somebody likes competitions, you know, fine. That That's up to them. But we who talk about this stuff on YouTube, uh, we kind of have a powerful voice. I was the first person. Uh, my channel was the f very first English language unboxing of the Bandai X-Wing when it first came out. I, I was the first person to show that on YouTube. Um, and of course I had some gripes, like the why would they shatter the the fuselage just to have like different colored plastics when it already came with like you know both decals and stickers so making the whole thing pointless. 
it's not necessary, but it was still a really cool model kit. Um, we we do have a voice, and I think we do need to be, um, you know, <laughs> with, with what was it with with great strength comes uh, great responsibility or whatever the 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 tagline is. Um, now, for example, here's one YouTuber that I do like, and a uh, bad Grendels. He made a video after the whole. Uh, the the cease and desist orders went out. Uh, he made a video called "Bad Ravel." I want my Bandai. Um, so when the news broke of this litigation going around, what happened? People tend to jump to conclusions. We have to be a bit, and I, I he should have deleted that by now. I don't know if it's still up or not. I have to check, but. That video should have been deleted a long time ago because I think a lot of people were, they took that as gospel, like this is news, and so, so then they were, you know, everybody's attacking Ravel, but it turns out probably it had more to do with Hasbro or, and or, like, those uh, tabletop role-playing games because of the whole standing figures, and as a result, the Bandai had to, like, retool their kits to get rid of the standing figures because they can only have the seated figures really stupid but that was what came out from that um so yeah disney has screwed them with their licensing other model kits other licenses band it doesn't have to deal with that and they can they can move forward with those those properties and um they don't they don't have to deal with that stuff uh so it's a different different story and they make stuff what they want to do and we have to just uh, enjoy it um or not buy it but i buy i have bought plenty of bandai kits but i also enjoy this old stuff like uh, like another one i'm slowly working on i have had so much fun with this thing even though it is inaccurate i have enjoyed putting all sorts of different greeblies on it and i have for star destroyers i have this thing here I have the Ravel build and play, I have the old AMT kit, I have the Zvesta, and I have the new Bandai one. I want to build all of them. Um, whether one is more accurate than the other, whatever. You have fun. You can accurize it. You can have a lot of fun. So, yeah, let's just uh, be, be good to each other. And um, I just have to call out the, the crap that I see. And uh, that's what the purpose of this video is. So anyhow, thanks for watching. Bye.